Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through and talk about the AKM, all the parts, a uh, couple of the builds that I've got, you know, things like the lowest recoil or the highest ergo and some combination builds, um, as well as a couple other specific builds for some of the tasks in the game. I do my guide videos a little bit different than everybody else that are a lot more detail, um, which makes the videos quite a bit longer. If you're just here to see the builds themselves, then by all means, check out the chapters down below. Hop forward to where I start talking about the specific builds and skip all the parts and stuff. Uh, don't hesitate to go check out some of my other gun guides. I do the same thing with just about every gun that I've done so far, um, with more to come. So with that out of the way, let's get right into this thing. So to start off, we'll talk about the guns, basically the group of the six 7.62 AKs you can have in the game. All six of these are as is bought from proper, so you can buy them just like this, though you usually find them much cheaper on the flea market than you can buy from him. So I have them broken down into with no attachments so we can look at the stats. One thing to point out in general, there's no difference in fire rate, there's no difference in muzzle velocity, and there's some differences in weight but nothing major other than with the uh, AK-104. The big thing you get into with the difference of these different kinds of guns, and I'm going to basically skip over the AKMSs. Um, I have them in here so we can look at them, but they, uh, they're they not practical in my opinion if you're building guns. Um, if you find one and you're running budgets, sure, but if you're going to do any kind of modifications, you're really limited because you can't do anything to the stocks with these. Also, anything with the AKMN in it means that it's got a dovetail on the side. So that's how you tell the difference between what you can attach a sight on the side or not. Um, if you're going with a dust cover on the back, the AKM works because you don't have to worry about um, the dovetail mount. But if you're going with dovetails, you got to do one of these two or one of the 103s and 104s. So getting into the stats with the AKM and the AKMN, as you can see, there's almost no difference. You've got a slight variation in your MOA, uh, but other than that, nothing changes. The only place you really get into your differences is if you're looking at your 103s and 104s um, versus your AKMNs. Now uh, we'll kind of look at the side stats here. You get a little bit of a different recoil between the 104 and the 103. Um, and then again, compared to the AKMN, your recoil is a little bit higher on the 103. Um, but your ergo is higher on your 104. So when it boils down to the difference between the AKMN, the AK-104, and the 103, it it's it's wrapped up into the ergo and a little bit of recoil. Uh, your 104 um, has the highest ergo, but your 103 is the lowest on recoil compared to the three. So when it comes to build outs, that's what really affects the difference is, um, you know, how much of an effectiveness reduction in recoil can you get because you start smaller or how high of an ergo can you get because you start higher there. With all that being said, there's a couple of things you need to deal with as far as compatibility. There's things that'll attach the, the one group of rifles that won't attach to the other group. And I kind of group these like this uh, just because that's generally how the attachments with the barrels and some of the other stuff work. So we'll go through that a little bit later and we'll show you what can and can't happen. Uh, but that boils down the AKM series. And real quick, before we go any further, I want to show you the uh, uh, the charging handle. It goes on all the AKs. If you didn't know about it, it adds one or a go. It's pretty cheap. And it doesn't fit in any other attachment, so I was just going to throw it into here. So real quick, we'll get through the dust covers here. Uh, you have six basic kinds that fit on the different variants. You have your AKM type and your 6P1 that go on basically all of the AKM styles, but not on the AK-103s. But like your Bastions and your PCDs, they go on all of them, so you're good with that. And then your 6P34 is your bare base that goes on the AK-103s. So get those out of the way. These are basically set up in stat order, um, starting with your Bastion with negative 2 accuracy and 5 ergo. Negative one accuracy and six on your TWS. Your B33 is plus seven ergo and no hit. And then your PDC is plus one accuracy and plus seven ergo. So you get a little bit of a idea of the different kinds. You can go all the way to the top here. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's there. And then the Bastion works as well for giving you your top rail uh, for attaching sights. Like with most of the guns in the game, the pistol grips are pretty straightforward. I have these ordered from lowest ergo to highest ergo. But remember when you're buying these, if you're on a budget, you can get pretty close for pretty cheap. The difference in cost, I mean, can be tens of thousands. For Like, for example, the RK3 can cost upwards of 35, 40,000, 44,000 rubles, and it gets you to 13. But if you come look at, like, the saw, 
one of these two, you know, you're half the price. So just be cognizant of that when you're shopping. Um, it doesn't always make sense to go up another 10,000 rubles for one more ergo. So now we're going to go over gas tubes and handguards because they're kind of one and one with each other. So we got to go through them together. Uh, the four gas tubes you can buy here, you've got the Keba Arms one, which we'll talk about why that's important later. Um, your 6P1, your AK-74, and your AKM type. All of these work with all of these handguards and work on all of the AKs. You know, it doesn't matter. They can all go on, so there is no big choice. The only one it comes down to is you can't put the Keba Arms on the AK-104. But the difference between these is price. There's no reason to buy these last two, really. Um, if you want to, you can. This one's sold by vendors, but it's a little bit more expensive than the 6P, uh, the 6P1. Um, that's why I kind of have it ordered like this. The, the AKM, though, isn't sold by vendors, so there's no reason to buy this. There's no reason to spend 20000 on this thing. There's no different. There's no like stat difference. They all weigh the same. So I would just take that guy and not even use it. We'll do everything with the 6P1 for now, just so we have consistency. Now, when it gets into these, some of these handguards have gas tubes in them already. So like with a V gas block combo deal. So there is no gas tube. It will go directly on to the AKM that it needs to go on to. Um, the difference is, is some of these will not attach on the shorter AK-104, but we'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, the, the only other caveat, again, to these things is this UFM, the Krebs custom thing, only goes on to the Kiba Arms gas tube. It will not go on any of these other gas tubes, as you can see. So you have to have this gas tube to use this grip. Uh, if you happen to find this or whatever you're doing with it. So that being said, I kind of have these ordered um, left to right, then down the row from what I see is kind of the best in this group. And then these are basically just ordered in uh, lowest ergo to highest ergo, because this group here kind of falls in the middle of this big group, but they have such a huge ergo jump, I wanted to separate them out. So these are kind of the stocks you go for if you're going for an ergo build. Um, and then these are the group that you go for for uh, either a low recoil or kind of a combination hybrid build. So starting off with your wood stock, which there's several more of these, but they're all plus four. So I'll just show that one. You have the one with uh, your grip, which gives you recoil and um, ergo. Uh, it's just got the wooden grip attached to this. You have your basic polymer, which has no attachments, um, getting into your B10, but only three and one. Then you've got your basic AK polymer, 100 series. It's five ergo, but gives you two attachment points. Uh, and then we'll we go down the line. This M1B has a gas tube in it, so it doesn't require a gas tube, but it doesn't give you a bottom grip attachment. Then the rest of these, you either have to buy rails for to put on like that, or they have rails attached to them. And then as you go through the rest of these, you can kind of pick what you want. Um, you got four and five, and then all the way down here, you got negative five and 10. Um, this is generally your meta hand guard for uh, the AK if you want to go max recoil. It also has real good ergo. And then you get into the better ergo versions of these where you're three and 12, and then you get three and 14, three and 14, and then three and 15. Uh, and then again, down to the UFM, which is three and 11, but requires this uh, specialty Kiba uh, gas tube, which you can buy from Peacekeeper at level three. Otherwise, you have to buy it off the flea market. So that's the stocks. There are some compatibility issues with some of the various AKs and dust covers, but I'll get into those in a different section to kind of show you how to navigate through that process. So here we're going to go through all the muzzle devices, attachments, brakes, suppressors, that stuff that you can put on to each of these AKs. Um, it's a little complicated, but it's pretty easy to simplify. So I have these broken up into three groups. Let me get these out of the way. So if you look from left to right, these are all ordered by their effectiveness, if you will, based on recoil. They have some other stats, but this is the highest in class recoil reduction at 12. This is your lowest. It just does one to muzzle velocity and this does 0.5 to muzzle velocity. Um, nothing doing there. You know, these are your basic, but I have them broken up based on how they can attach to each of the AKs. Everything in this top row can attach to all the AKM series rifles, as you can see here. Um, they'll attach to these, but not to the 103s. This Dynacomp is the only one in the middle row here. Uh, it will attach to all six of these firearms with no special attachment. And then the ones on the bottom will only attach to the AK-103 and 104 directly, but not to the AKMs. Now, that being said, if you take this TT AKM adapter and you put it on any of these AKM series, then it will allow you to put 
any of these on here. So if I put that there, now this has got that adapter. Now it will go on these four. So essentially you can make it to where any of these attachments can attach to any of the AKM series. You can't revert any of these down to the AK 104s, for example, like you can't, there's no way to get this onto the AK 104 or that. So your best recoil on the AK 104 is the um, negative nine right there. And that's kind of where you're stuck with those. Now, suppressors, I kind of have them broken up in the same fashion. Um, you have your hybrid 46 with your DT mount, which can go on all six. So you can use the hybrid 46 on all of these. Once you put the, the DT mount on, it'll attach to all of these. Uh, let me move those over. So you can actually see the green. So it'll go to all of those once you put the DT mount on. Uh, after that, you have your Hexagon AKM, which will only go on the AKM series with no special attachments. Then you have your rotor and your PSB ones, which will go on all six um, without any adapter. And then your DTKP and your DTK 4M will go on the AK 103 and 104. Um, clean, but not these until you put the TTAKM adapter on there, in which case it will go to all of those. And as you can see, it works for both of them. Then you can put, attach those to every AK. So that boils down your uh, compensators, uh, flash hiders, suppressors, and the like for all of the AKM and 103 and 104 series. So there's a couple of things to talk about here with the sights and mounts, if you will. Um, for the most part, as long as it has a dovetail attachment, so for example, like there's no dovetail attachment here, but here there is, which is basically what the difference between the AKM N, the little N on either of these is, and just the regular AKM is it doesn't have a dovetail attachment, then both the 103 and the 104 do. So basically all of these, you can attach all of these side mounts to them, um, as well as the direct attach sights. These will all go on top of here. Um, the only reason that's not going is because there's not enough room, but it would go if it wasn't there because it adds a whole block. But as you can see, they won't go on those. For these, your only uh, options for sights is either a rail, um, a dust cover with a rail on it like that, um, or this uh, thing that mounts onto the rear sight uh, goes on right there and allows you to attach a red dot. Um, now you have to be careful because if you have this on here, you can't really see, right? You can't see that you got it, but it won't let you go on there if that rear sight is there. So you have to make sure you take that rear sight off, uh, to be able to attach this. Um, one other thing to note is, is that once you put a dust cover on one of these, uh, that has a, um, a rail on the top, you can no longer attach anything to the dovetail mount. It will not allow you, um, just cause it, they essentially take up the same space. Um, it's only meant for the smooth uh, top dust covers. So keep that in mind when you're attaching, uh, trying to attach stuff with this on here. Uh, lastly, I kind of want to talk real quick about the um, iron sights. You know, you've got your standard iron sights here. Uh, this is for like suppressed rounds when you're shooting subsonic ammo in real life. Um, as far as the game, it doesn't really serve anything special purpose. But you have your rear sights and then your, your front sights are attached, hard attached to the gun. But if we take, uh, we'll take this AKMN, for example, um, we'll put this here. You can attach these two little uh, um, attachments to the sights themselves. So this goes straight to on the, the gun because it, it, it attaches to the front sight, which is there. But then this piece attaches to the rear sight. Um, and if you look, you'll see it actually makes this thing quite a bit easier to see. Um, so it adds quite a bit to your iron sights. So if you're really going budget and you don't want to spend the money on sights, these are super cheap. And you can get them from level two proper uh, for just uh, less than a thousand rubles for the pair. And then one other thing I want to mention real quick, some people don't know, is that the Cobra site, you buy it like this, but then you can buy this little uh, site shade that adds one ergo. Um, doesn't cost very much and gives you just that little bit extra ergo for your attachment if you would like it. So another one of the pieces here is the magazines. Now, there's a lot to choose from, but most of them don't really matter. At the end of the day, your differences between like the worst 30 round mag, for example, is negative four ergonomics and the best 30 round mag is negative one ergonomics and then 10 percent to the uh, load and unload speed modifier so it's not a huge difference this isn't going to really change the way the game goes unless you're trying to really min max but here's a list of all of them in the order of kind of best stats to worst with the 30 rounders the 40 rounders the 50 75 and 73. you have your two tens make sure when you're shopping you don't actually buy accidentally buy this guy um, it will uh, ruin your day in a hurry when you've only got 10 rounds, even though it looks like it's a 30-rounder. 
These are kind of a pain to use just because there's only a couple of rigs that actually have three slots that you can use these in. 50 rounder is expensive, um, but effective. And then you've got your two big ash drums. This one's your cheaper one at negative 26 ergo and 35 unload uh, your uh, pro mag version, which is 17 ergo hit and uh, 22 and 15 on the unload and load modifiers. So real quick, we'll just run through the ammo here. Uh, I've got these ordered from lowest penetration to highest. Uh, you start off at uh, 15 for the HP, 29 for US, which is a subsonic ammo, 30 for the tracer uh, ammo, uh, 32 for the PS, and then all the way up to 47 for BP. Uh, the damages kind of bounce all over the place, but your HP is your highest damage uh, and your BP is your highest penetration with kind of everything in the middle. Um, the only two rounds that really matter this game is PS and BP. Early wipe T45 can be good just because it's got quite a bit more flush damage, uh, but at this point it's not going to get through even most armors. So uh, these are going to be your two primary go-to rounds for the most part being BP uh, if you want to do PVP. All right, now here comes one of the more confusing parts of the whole AK build, in my opinion. It's the stocks, because there's just such an overwhelming number of pieces that you can put on here. So I've kind of broken this up into groups so you can kind of see a little bit better of how this all works. So to start off with, you have your straight stocks that just blow straight onto this thing. That's what this group here is for. So you've got your wooden stocks, your polymer stocks, and then kind of your uh, aftermarket super cool tactical stocks um, that you can put on the AKs including this red goofy looking thing. All of these that are your standard wood stocks, as well as these two down here can accept this rubber butt pad, um, which gives you an additional five and one. So this is fantastic for budget runs. Um, you need level two proper to get it, but once you have it real quick, slap it on any of these stocks here and you're ready to go. So for stats, um, I ordered these from highest recoil to highest ergo, uh, pretty quick choice here, 4911. Um, 46 and 14, and then 39 and 17, depending on the build you're going for, higher ergo or higher recoil reduction. You also have this AKTS here. Um, it doesn't need any adapters. It goes on in the AKM variants um, pretty straight away, just like that. And then it allows you to put any of the M4 style uh, that need M4 buffer tube um, attached uh, stock. So this group down here we'll talk about in a sec, but it doesn't require any adapter. It goes straight onto it. Then you have your PT-1. If you want to put one of these on for some reason, you need to use the AKM lock. That's the only purpose it has. And then you have your two uh, AKMS and AK, uh, what is it? AKMS and AKMSN. Um, these are the two stocks. That, that That's the only thing that can go on these um, for these folding stock style uh, guards. After this group, we'll get into the ones that the ME4 attaches. So that's all of these stocks here as well as this guy, this little tube, which has a couple of stocks, but this is pretty much the best one you would put on would be this PRS uh, Gen 2. But all of these go onto this little ME4, which will attach onto the back, just like that, which allows you to put any of those number of stocks into the AKMs. Now these stats are, you know, kind of all over the place. It's kind of a, a difference of opinion on what you want to run with recoil or Ergo, there is best in slots, but if you have one of these in your inventory and you're just looking for something to use, here's a place you can use it. Now, lastly, we get into the rest of the buffer tubes for the uh, M4s, technically, but this ME4 will allow them to attach as well. Um, you've got your best in class, obviously, this the red uh, expensive buffer tube all the way down to the 8R and the Colt standard tube CST. Um, but that allows all of the different stocks, which if you look here, um, there is an enormous number of stocks to choose from um, this whole list right here. But if you want to look at kind of the best in class, I've got the um, the highest ergo, the highest recoil reduction. Um, this is technically the highest ergo, but it's kind of like a sniper stock, um, as well as some that are middle down the road. Once you put the rubber, like this, once you put the rubber butt pad on, these two are pretty close to one another. Uh, all can go on to these attachments as well as this AKTS right here. So lots of choices. Um, we'll go through what's best in class a little bit later just so we can get a little bit better of a picture of it. But I wanted you guys to be able to see everything so you understand what's going on. Okay, so the first of the compatibility issues I want to talk about right now is the B33 dust cover. So because of the way this thing attaches, um, I guess because of how it bolts down here to the barrel, uh, it limits the number of handguards you can put on here. So I group these into two big groups. 
I guess one little group and one big group. All of these handguards cannot go on with the B33. Only these two can as far as compatibility goes. Um, and this is with the this is across the board with all of the rifles. It doesn't matter if it's the 103 or the AKMs or anything like that. So if you try to put any of these others on, uh, for example, the AK Polymer C says you can't and can't not install both B33 and AK and Polymer at the same time. And that's the case with uh, most of these. Some of them are like, I got to pull a gas tube off to check some of these other ones. But um, see, even that one there, these do not work. So keep that in mind when you're picking dust covers. So the second compatibility issue I want to talk with is the AK-104 um, and the 103. So for most at standard circumstances, the 103 is comparable to the AKMs as far as handguards are concerned. And what that means is basically because the 104 is shorter, there's certain handguards that can't go on it, I assume, because it would be too long. So that's what these seven here are. Um, these will not go on here. Uh, just simply because they are too long to attach to the shorter 104. The exception to that is uh, the uh, UFM, and that's primarily because, and it's probably because it's too long too, but you can't put this gas tube on the AK-104. But the rest of these are all good to go on the 104, um, even some of these two slaughters, which are technically a little bit longer, but they will still fit. Uh, so that helps you sort through parts there a little bit. One real quick thing I want to talk about is the AKMS um, N and the AKMS variants. You cannot attach stocks to these other than this, um, other than these rotating stocks. They do not have the ability to attach stocks to them. So do not try to go grab any kind of um, even the most basic stock. So, you know, if you're going super budget, you can throw a rubber butt pad on one of these. If you get one of these cheap or you find it in raid and you don't have any money, um, but in general, I would avoid the AKMSs uh, myself just because you can't mod the stocks. So another compatibility issue to sort through real quick, I want to show you how there's a difference between the AK-103 and 104 and the AKM uh, and AKM ser N series. With the AK-104, even though these are both AKTSs, as you can see, I mean, even their names are exactly the same. If you look, their attachments are completely different. And that's because this guy will go right here. This guy will go here, but they won't cross over. And these all allow you to attach the M4 style stocks to these. Um, but as far as what you can do for buffer tubes, these are the only two on the 103s. And for the AKMN, you have this uh, ME4 attachment that won't attach here. And then when it comes for the PTs, um, you have an AKM lock that allow you to do that, but won't allow you there. Whereas the uh, PT lock will let you put both of these on the AK. 103 series of rifles though these are not best in class I, I wouldn't see there as being much of a chance of running either of these stocks on the akms but just so you guys know how they attach so one other compatibility issue i want to show you guys uh that some people don't know about is with the dust covers here so with the dog leg and the bastion they won't attach without taking the rear sight off of the firearm so i think that's because that's how they attach they literally attach to the sight so until you do that, you will not be able to attach these. And same thing, you can't put the rear sight back on with those on there. So just keep that in mind. One little quick thing to mention to you guys. So with these specific builds, I took a little different approach that some of you may agree with, some may not. I'm going to show you the absolute minimum recoil or maximum ergo you can get out of these firearms and try not to be redundant. Also, I have everything unlocked from the trader, so my builds are on the cheaper end. Your mileage will vary based on what you can buy from traders and what you have to buy from players. Some of these parts are three or four more times expensive if you don't have them unlocked to the traders. I also don't include the cost of the gun with these builds. I'll show you the average cost of the guns at the end, as well as a few barters to keep in mind. Starting out with the AKM Max Ergo, this thing might look cool, but in my opinion, it shoots like trash. The key parts here are the hexagon red handguard and the red stock. Without a mag in it, you're using a D-ball laser and a PKO-6, you can get it up to 87 ergo. As well as having a gun that stands out like a sore thumb. People must really like them too, because I built a few of these just to run and test them out in game and I never got a single one back from insurance. So if you have landmark level recoil control or you like burning rules to keep warm, this may be the gun for you. It'll run about 150K in parts to get the gun going too. Next up, we'll look at the minimum recoil AKM. Now, technically, you can get this down to 54 recoil using the EKP-8 and the RK-2 grip. And while this is technically the lowest recoil you can get this beast down to, you're trading a lot of ergo and using a crappy sight just for a few more points of recoil reduction. So for practicality, I threw one in here that is super low recoil, but not technically the lowest. I'll do this for all of the min recoil builds going forward as well. So if you want to see the min recoil, just slap an RK-2 and an EKP-8 on any of the 762 AKs. So instead of the EKP-8, I use the PKO-6 but choose your favorite site. I also put on a canted RK-1. 
These changes only add four vertical recoil, but puts you up to 68 ergo. The gun handles a little better, and I don't notice a difference in the recoil between the two builds. It's also a little lighter, and the sight is way, way better. This will cost you north of 200k in parts though, so it's pricey. Following this, I want to show the minimum recoil 103. I really like this gun. It's a little cheaper to build than its counterpart on the AKM frame. It shoots fantastic and has a little higher ergo. Again, you can use the RK2 and the EKP8 to get this down to 61 recoil, but like the AKM, for practicality, I'll use the PK06 and Canton RK1 again. This puts you at 64 vert and 74 ergo. The shoots on par, in my opinion, with the AKM. The gun will cost you 6 to 10k less, and the parts are about 5k less than the AKM build. Lastly, I'll show you the AK-104. This one built for Ergo is a little less meme-ish since you don't put any of the red parts on it, but still shoots like trash at 97 vertical recoil. But you can get it to almost 100 Ergo if that's your thing. This is right at 115 to 120k in parts to build. The recoil version of this is a pretty good gun. It handles well and is a little shorter for those that prefer indoor fights. It has 71 recoil, which is a little high, but still manageable. And at 79 Ergo, it handles really well. As a bonus, it's also the cheapest of the low recoil AKs to build. It saves you about 40k on each gun between the parts and the cost of the gun, making it the cheapest 7.6 AK to build for recoil. You can get a full recoil build for less than 200k gun included. The last two I have is a budget build and the Punisher task build. The budget build has 88 recoil and 51 ergo and will run about 58 to 60k in parts. But you can save another 20k if you go with an AKMS or a K AKMSN if you're really, really trying to get the cost down. These can be unwieldy and you have to have some recoil control with them. But if you shoot BP ammo, this will shred almost any opponent you come up against. The Punisher build is about the cheapest and most useful way I found to get this quest done. The stats are not so important here as you'll be shooting this thing single fire most of the time. What's important is its intended use. The goal is to hit the scab hot spots, kill them, and get out. I was able to finish this task in just two runs this wipe. And I survived both raids, and I credit that to using this. It's suppressed, which keeps you from drawing attention from other players, allows you to easily engage out to 150 or 200 meters, and was very cheap, even early wipe. This costs you about 40k in parts, but it's all on the suppressor. So if you go without that, you're only looking at 10 to 15k. All right, guys, that wraps up the video. I know it was pretty long. Thanks for hanging out and sticking through it. If you guys got anything out of this, please hit like. Uh, if you want to see future content, hit subscribe. It helps out the channel a bunch. I've got a handful of other uh, gun guide videos that are similar to this if you want to check those out, as well as my hideout and money-making guides too. Um, I stream on Twitch most nights, so don't hesitate to come over and say hi. And we have a Discord full of folks that are willing to answer any kind of questions you can come up with. So don't be afraid to come over and say hi there too. Other than that, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you in Tarkov.